Hey everyone, we're back. We're back. And I just wanted to share an important revelation that occurred between recording sessions. Yeah? Uh, Rena Ryugu, noted fan of pickles. Yeah? Yep. I'm just saying this only helps confirm trans Rena theory. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to be on the baseball team, but had the transition. Still follows the sport, though. <laughs> Still love, absolutely loves pickles. Doesn't like people mentioning her dead name. Come on. It just, it just works. It just fits. It just fits. Also, I was getting really sad because of stuff that was happening. So now I have the the, the Cherno. I've got Cherno with me now, and it, it, it's a little bit better. Your emotional support, Fairy. My emotional support, Baka. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Wea, this won't be very interesting, aren't you? Oh, Ishi-san, realizing my resolve couldn't be swayed, finally caved. Right now, to me, there's nothing that I'll find uninteresting. <laughs> Please. <clears throat> Well, all right, but there are a few things I need you to agree to. All right? Please keep this confidential. Also, part of this may be speculation. Not all of it may be true. Are you still interested? It might not be true. I don't understand what you mean. <sighs> there ain't just one main investigation for the mysterious chain of deaths here in Hinamizawa. Each one is treated as its own individual case. And thus, Rena Ryugu has never been linked to any of these investigations. Basically, you see, the same invest, the same investigation of, uh, oh, the same invest. Why am I saying ain't now? <laughs> I'm like you. This isn't an investigation of Rena done by the police, and is a personal inquiry, is what you're telling me. That'll make things a lot quicker, since you understand. All of it is from either phone calls or meetings and interviews, so they ain't corroborated. I'm asking you to take this all with a grain of salt, is what I mean. Do we have an agreement? All of it's just from what you heard. Yes, my apologies. It's all my personal investigation, you see. The thing. Before you said you saw Rena's chart, didn't you? I'm sure I heard you say that. Oishi-san paused for a moment on the other end of the line. I told you that too, did I? <laughs> Please pretend you didn't hear nothing about that. I didn't care about Oishi-san having certain obligations and responsibilities. I also didn't care if there was no proof. Even if they were just rumors, there was no smoke without fire, after all. Please tell me, Oishi-san. Understood. Oishi-san finally opened up those tight lips of his. It seemed that Rena lived in Hinamazawa a long time ago. She had moved to Ibaraki Prefecture after she finished elementary school. And then following that, right after transferring, the unfortunate incident with the breaking of the school windows happened. And then Rena confided to the doctor. It was Oyashiro-sama. This was all that he knew. There ain't much of a difference between what I know and what you know, may bear a Then what part did you investigate further? I didn't need to ask. It was the incident that happened just after she transferred. The incident that Rena was responsible for... Oh. It's the incident that Rena was responsible for, and what she divulged to the doctor afterwards, correct? Uh, yup. After you learned about that, you started suspecting Rena and the others, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did suspect them. So they're the ones after all? Ah, uh, uh, no, that ain't what I mean by suspect them. Huh? Oh, she sound was the type of person to say things with confidence, but these particular words were less than reassuring. Then who did you suspect? I began to suspect that it was Oyashiro Sama. Huh? That Oyashira Sama's curse really exists. <laughs> yeah, all right, well. <laughs> Oishi-san's laugh was quite dry, certainly not the kind that would make you want to join in. Oishi-san resumed the conversation about the dubious circumstances behind Satoshi's disappearance. The cause of events up until the start of delving into Rena's past, which I now said in his voice, and I'm not going to repeat because I'm too fucking tired. <laughs> Just then, there was thunder in the distance, and a heavy rain started pouring down. It came without warning, rain so heavy that it felt like it could beat you down. I left the window in my room open a crack to let the heat out. The violent wind danced into my room, making the curtains flap wildly. What is it? Uh, nothing. It just started raining heavily. Sorry, please continue. I got up while still on the phone and closed the window. I said at the beginning it was an incident, but... 
Because neither the school nor victims filed charges, police were never officially involved. You see, those involved were very reluctant to talk. Regardless of there being a victim who had one eye beaten so badly that it got permanent damage. Could have been the school or possibly some individual who made arrangements to keep this from all going public. Also, the psychologist was very strict about their professional ethics. Hello? May Barisan, can you hear me? There was the figure of a person standing by the light near the mailbox this whole time. Even in this torrential rain, they didn't have an umbrella. <clears throat> they were unquestionably drenched from head to toe. In the shower, which more resembled a waterfall, droplets of water dripped down from her hair. You left her out there, you dump... Right, we're not getting mad. Because he's clearly not well at the moment. Isn't that right, emotional support, Cherno? <sighs> Got my little emotional support back. I'm all good now. Just standing there, both arms dangling at her side. In one hand was the stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. Her eyes focused on my room, focused on me as I was about to close the window. Her mouth was methodically repeating a chewing motion. It was as if she had something hard to chew in her mouth with her cheeks puffing out. What could she be eating over there? Oh, also, we had a conversation between episodes about, like, oh, God, did her fingers actually come off? Or, is she, you know... <laughs> And I think we reasoned that they couldn't come off because otherwise they'd have to draw new sprites. <laughs> Can't bring up those nice mitten hands. <laughs> is she chewing or is she just repeating I'm sorry over and over? I wonder. I wonder. What could she be eating over there? How could it be that at this time I was more enthralled by Rena instead of the shocking developments brought to light by Oishi-san? If it hadn't started raining, I wouldn't have gone to the window. Then I wouldn't have noticed Rena, nor would I have noticed that. Rena's mouth was moving in the same pattern. She was eating something. She was repeating something. What was it? She was repeating to me. What was she saying? And why was I right up against the window, fixated on her? Hello, May Barra saying. Can you hear me now? Hello. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, May Barra saying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hello, May Barra saying. What's the matter? Oh, this is her saying it. Mm. Even in this torrential downpour, Rena was still apologizing. The other self inside me drew the curtain hastily with my right hand, blocking my view of the outside. But even doing that, Rena's relentless apology still reached my ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I forgive you for this, will you forgive me for that? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I'm sorry. 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 Damn it! Why did I have to forgive her? The one who wants to be forgiven. What part of me can't you forgive? I won't be killed. If you won't forgive me, then I won't forgive you either. I won't forgive. I won't forgive. I won't forgive. Won't forgive. Won't forgive. Won't forgive. Won't forgive. I won't forgive. May Barisan, if you can hear me, then please respond. Hello? Really glad this is SK does deranged soliloquy hours. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, emotional support, Cherno. I highly recommend everyone get one of these. <laughs> You've received new tips, split personality, and at the seventh mark. Oh, the, the achievement we just caught is called Reign of Apologies, Falling on Deaf Ears. Take this time. I see it in movies often, but what is it exactly? Multiple personalities are thought to be escapism. Multiple personality disorder is a form of escape, nah? Correct. The exact mechanism is not fully understood, but it's believed to be a type of defense for the brain to retain mental stability. Hypothetically, poor people imagining themselves as wealthy in a form of is a form of escapism, ain't it not? It's also a form of multiple personality disorder? I wouldn't go that far, but broadly speaking, one could infer that. It's something that occurs in us all. Does a split personality occur when one cannot tell which is reality and which is the escape? That's difficult to say. There are some who agree with that and some who disagree. There is no consensus. Then the occurrence of multiple personalities is still an unknown phenomenon, something not fully comprehended by the psychiatric field. 
Unfortunately, that is the current state of things. We can only put our hope in future research. Wait. Who's talking? But, but it's sort of cool having a split personality, don't you think? What kind of people get them? Uh, recent studies find that those who develop it, or rather those who are more susceptible to developing it, may be genetically predisposed or may have had abnormal mental development. Some say that childhood abuse increases the chances. Speaking of which, Person A here experienced abuse as a child, didn't he? How sad. Person A has seven different personalities. Let's watch a video of him. Right after these commercials. Oh, this is a TV. Okay, so it's a little bit sensationalized. Got it. And remember what we said earlier about Ryukishi and his history with this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's got a lot of trust for me. So, at the 7th Mart. The Seventh Mart was a bargain supermarket with food and alcohol. What's this, Keiichi? So many, there's no reason to get all the different kinds, is there? I flopped all the different colored cup noodle bowls into the cart. Cup noodles have gotten so elaborate recently, and uh, there's a bunch of different types of them. I want to try each of them at least once. That's a noble goal, is that the is. thing. That is, actually. I agree with him on this. I knew it was pretty selfish of me, but I thought I'd at least give it a try. Keiichi, buy them in the big case. It's cheaper. Dad faltered. Well, I had a feeling I'd, it'd end up like this. Dad knew there was no point in him butting in. Then I only get to eat one kind. I'd get bored with it. I was resisting as a formality. I'd already given up inside and wasn't sure which case of noodles to get. If you can't pick, then Mommy will pick for you. You don't have to rush me. I quickly searched the cases of noodles for what I want. Pork, bone, and ginger. Large cup? Oh. Pork, bone, and ginger. Large cup. Hey, Keiichi, can't you get a more normal one? If I let mom pick, she'd err on the side of safety and get soy sauce or salt flavored. Pork, bone is good. I don't want a big bowl of tasteless stuff. Remembered insisting that the noodles I picked were the right kind. In this frozen memory and time, this encapsulated world, I didn't have the power to look around my surroundings. So I did what I could and reached out with my hearing and vision, sharpening my senses to find the presence I had overlooked. No matter how much I searched through my field of vision, I couldn't see Rena. I rewound the situation, searching, but of course I couldn't find her. Then, was she spying on me from my blind spot? I go through the sound and presences again, looking. I could sense the other customers. They were all mixed about, moving as they please. There was no one looking over this way, and no one trying to get behind me. Not here. Couldn't be here. Probably wasn't here. I would definitely notice if someone was right behind me, even if I wasn't on my guard. I smiled wryly at the thought of using a vague word like probably right before contradicting it with definitely. Then I paused my mental replay as a chill ran down my spine. There was definitely a presence like a shadow behind me. That was a terror unlike any other. If a presence really had manifested behind me, I would definitely have turned around to check for it. But the world had moved on, and there was no way for me to turn around. While carrying that frightening shadow on my back, I was gleefully running around the store, searching for a case of noodles, running through the instant noodle section, bad-mouthing my mother. But there was that presence constantly at my back, sticking to me like a shadow. No way to see what it was. Realizing it now after the fact was horrifying and repulsive. In that moment of time, I was running around gleefully, carrying that cardboard box. Tip. Tap. But listening to that moment again, I could hear footsteps other than mine growing pit. Pat. With every step. Tip. Tap. Tip. Tap. Tip. Tap. Pit. Pat. Pit. Pat. While I was running, the sound of those barefoot footsteps going pit-pat were right behind mine. Me running around gleefully in that closed-off moment in time. But I didn't hear it. No, I heard it. And that's why I remembered it. I didn't think I had heard anything. And that's why I didn't turn around. And that is why I didn't turn around. In that moment, the pit-pat of those footsteps were following me the entire time. I couldn't run faster and escape. I couldn't run any faster and I had ran than I had ran at that time. I couldn't turn around. I hadn't turned around before, not once. Then I returned to my parents and started talking. The shadow-like presence was right at my back. Since I didn't move, the shadow didn't move. That is why it made no sound. That was all. At that time, I hadn't taken a single step while talking with my parents. I was just standing there, 
This was undeniable, and yet... I heard it. A pit-pat. That shouldn't be. If I took three steps, it followed three steps. Wasn't that the rule? There was no sound other than that. At the time, the entire world had gone dark, a sudden darkness. It was the end of my reflective journey. I was tired. I wanted to end it. Someone, turn on the light. Except my body couldn't move. As if I was sewn into that moment in time. Pit. Pat. My past self's hair stood on end. That's impossible. Now that's just breaking the rules. I haven't moved, so you shouldn't be moving either. I couldn't move, so you shouldn't be able to move either. Follow the damn rules. Pit. Yet that sound echoed in the darkness once again. The hair on the back of my neck pricked up on end. It was so close that it was hard to tell whether it was touching the hair or not. Why couldn't I move? Like how the presence was moving behind me. I quickly realized I could move. It's just that I was scared and I didn't want to. But now was the only time I could turn around. It was something unforgivable in this moment in time, but I needed to turn around immediately. As if my entire being was trying to force me to stop, it began to administer a pain like a needle being stuck into my every pore. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. I'll turn around. I'm going to turn around. I'm not scared at all. A scream that I was unable to vocalize. I turned around. And at first I couldn't understand the meaning of it. <laughs> what? What is this? The situation in front of my eyes, it was like a mouth biting an apple and slurping the juice the way you would do with an apple. My mind was being eaten. I began to munch down slurping the juices because it was like an apple, meaning that what was in front of me was. <laughs> oh, that's all the tips. Wow. Wow. Again, dude loves making up a guy and getting scared at him. Yeah, huh? Like, just think about it for a moment. If there had been someone behind him when he was talking to his parents, they would have been like, Oh, hi, Rena. How are you doing? Fancy to see you here. <laughs> what do you think, Cherno? She's just giving me a smug look. What if the... What if the... What if he was being followed by someone the parents couldn't see or didn't know to look for? Mm, then how would he know to be aware of them? <laughs> How many chapters did you say there were in this game? In this, I thought fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, that's the end of chapter eleven. Apparently, the end of the tips too. Interesting. Uh, I could be misremembering. Maybe. Who knows? It could be that it was twelve. Or something. Could check our Steam a two looks progress. kind of like a five. Huh? A two looks kind of like a five. They're yeah. like right next to each other. They are actually on the numpad. Hmm. And also in the number line. Okay, moving. I mean, I guess if you zoom out enough, yeah, they kind of are. <laughs> I guess I'd be lying if I said I didn't get any sleep. I tried to stay awake all night, but there were definitely gaps in my memory. I guess I kept nodding off and jerking awake in a panic all night. I spent all night hugging the metal bat and sat on top of the futon I used to barricade my door. Waiting, waiting, watching just in case someone tried to break in through my window. If I left this spot, someone would break through the door, sending the futon flying and attack me. But if I stopped watching the window, someone would break through the glass and attack me there. I tried telling myself I was just being paranoid, but I couldn't sleep. The thought of being so vulnerable scared the living daylights out of me. If sleep meant taking that risk, then I didn't need it. I was so much better to just stay awake. At some point during that endless cycle of nodding off and jolting away, light began to shine outside, but that was it. It wasn't so much the morning as it was just the sun simply having risen. I snuck a peek out through the curtains. Rena was gone. 
I couldn't see her anywhere no matter how hard I looked. Finally, I could breathe a deep sigh of relief. The night was finally over. But see, that's also the problem, is that if you're being properly paranoid, why should the people after you care about whether it's day or night? <laughs> right? Yeah, you've already established that nobody would hear what was going on if it was out here, because you're far away from the rest right? of the houses. Common, common horror protagonist mistake right there. <laughs> Daylight doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> I mean, daylight just means you have a further, you can see further out around you, I guess, but that doesn't mean that the horrible stuff has gone away. Unless you're an Edgar Winter album. Do, do, do. Ba, da, ba, 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 What? Do, 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 do. They, they only come out at night by the Edgar Winter group? Oh, Known okay. Known for the fantastic tracks free ride and also frankenstein okay i knew you were doing frankenstein but i had no idea what you were referring to you don't know the album they come out at night but i didn't remember the title of it God. <sighs> you know what i guess we all make compromises in our relationships <laughs> and one i've needed to make is that my wife is not familiar with 1970s classic rock group the edgar winter group i know frankenstein uh-huh I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tired, but I didn't feel like sleeping at the moment. I still had time, but I needed to make my own breakfast, so I'd better get started soon. Skipping school was also an option. With my mom gone, it'd be easy to play hooky. Honestly, I debated it. The risk involved in leaving my house was incalculable. So staying holed up in here was probably my safest option, but staying in here wouldn't solve anything. Oishi-san wouldn't help me out without cold, hard evidence. Neither he nor my parents. So unless I found some sort of proof these relentless nights would ever end, would never end. I stretched my body, tilted my head back, and closed my eyes just like I did every morning. He's going to go to school like this? I regulated my breathing and regained my senses. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. Let's go to school. Let's wait until they set their trap for me. But that didn't just mean I was going to twiddle my thumbs. I needed to avoid that trap and secure irrefutable evidence. Take note of the plates of any car that drives by. If I see someone suspicious, check their clothes and face. I wasn't just protecting myself, I was preparing myself to turn their attack against them and retaliate. And as we all know, going through life with that mentality is definitely a healthy way to be. <laughs> the tension was similar when two samurai were both aiming to slay each other with a single motion as they drew their katanas. I was not at a disadvantage. I would have a chance to retaliate. I finally felt a bit of courage growing in my chest. All right, let's go to school. I tightened my grip on Satoshi's bat. He was the only partner I could count on. Satoshi, please lend me your strength, and entrust your dying regrets to me, since you were probably murdered. I'll make sure that I dispel them. With renewed resolve to check the clock, it was still early. Of course, I was going to school by myself today. If I didn't want to run into Rena or Mion, I needed to leave now. The shattered fragments of the cupboard were still strewn all over the entryway. Right, I meant to clean that up last night, but never got around to it with the phone call and everything. My parents came back and saw this while I was at school. I would never hear the end of it. Still, I'd be wasting time if I cleaned it up right now. And considering what would happen if I ran into Rena or Mion, it wouldn't be too late to clean it up after I got back home. Making extra certain the doors were locked, I left the house. My uniform was still covered in mud from yesterday, so I left it in the washer. Today, I was going to go to school in a tracksuit. By wearing a different outfit this morning, my mind was forced to accept that today was different from yesterday. I had a hunch. Today might be the day that I get killed. Keep your guard up, Keiichi Maibara. The only one who gets to decide if today is my day is me. Someone uh, in our Discord pointed out that the, the music we're hearing right now isn't the same music as the original game. This yeah. is kind of like royalty-free stuff for the uh, the Steam release. But I don't, I don't think that's what was said, uh, that this was royalty-free stuff. I believe these some of these tracks sound familiar to me as though they've okay, been so in the that, like, But stuff was definitely excised. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, so I think it was someone else who commented on the first episode and said that they thought it was royalty-free stuff, which is probably where I got it. But if it sounds familiar to you, then that's probably not the case. I believe what they were saying was that they were encouraging us to use the uh, tracks yeah, from yeah. the original because they were ones that would be 
royalty free that we wouldn't get copyright struck for doing it. Right, I believe right, that right. was the context. Oh, okay. I misunderstood then. Regardless, I was go- that was a roundabout way of me getting to like I still think the music is used effectively. Yeah. I I, I like that the music is not tense. It's very sad and remorseful. <laughs> KG cuz it's like it's not about things coming to a head. It's about him slowly like losing his grip and that's sad. No. I feel bad for him. Yeah. I really do. It but, sucks. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I feel bad for the people around him who are seeing their friend go through this and don't know how to help. And, and what's keep... more, at least one of whom seems to have seen this happen before. Yeah, exactly. And it's like... <sighs> it just sucks all around. It's not... It's scary in the sense that like, it's a scary thing to happen to someone you know. But it's not scary and like, oh, slasher stuff. It's like, this is just sad. I don't know, man. When people describe the Higurashi anime, I expected more slasher stuff is what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) We got a lot of chapters left. That's true. We do have a lot of chapters left. I spent the morning practicing my swing like it was my natural routine. After a while, Rena arrived at school. Our eyes met, but we said nothing. Rena said nothing about last night, as if it never had happened. But I could see that those events were real by the wounds carved into her fingers. I just heard her telling Sadako and the others that the bandages were from hurting herself in the kitchen. Though it wasn't like it bothered me. The details that Oishi-san shared about Rena's incident before her transfer played vividly in my mind. Now that I knew about it, I couldn't even dream of Rena as a cute ideal girl. Okay, Chan, I see you're still aiming for the Nationals. It was Mion. I had already sensed her approach, so I wasn't that surprised. Oh, Mion. If you understand, then leave me alone. I'm busy practicing. I gave her a curt reply without any of my usual jokes. Then I gave the bat an even larger swing, tact- tacitly keeping Mion from getting even closer. Hey, Keichan, Take it easy. I think Mion got the message, but she still urged me to give it a rest. Homeroom's not that far off, is it? Just let me finish practicing, all right? I swung the bat even harder as a sign of my refusal. Keichan. When did you get into baseball? Oh, just recently. Why? Recently? You mean yesterday? Don't ask if you already know. Oh dear, that's a very unsportsmanlike reply. Your your your. <laughs> I was just gonna say your swinging form is terrible. <laughs> You're distracting me. Go away. I ignored Mion and kept swinging. Normally she'd get mad or bored and leave if someone gave her the cold shoulder like this. But Mion just stood there, waiting patiently for me to stop swinging. Mion's dealt with people like this before, hasn't she? Hmm. She's used to being the adult and having to find ways of dealing with stuff. I didn't sense any hostility. But we were at school in plain view. I doubt she'd suddenly attack me here. Or was that too naive? Still, I was starting to get tired. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to take a break and hear her out. You need me for something, right? What is it? Sweat poured from me as I stopped swinging. I noticed my shoulders were heaving as I breathed. I crushed my lack of exercise. At this rate, I'd not, not be able to move as needed when the time came. I should probably keep practicing my swings to build stamina, in addition to the excuse for carrying the bat around with me. Well, it's nothing important. If you're tired, I can ask again later. Eh, now is fine. I'm only dealing with you right now because I judge the situation to be safe. Talking to you alone and away from others? That's out of the question. Well, um... Mion was uncharacteristically trying to choose her words, but... Unlike Oishi-san, it didn't look like she was going to talk about something I'd rather not hear. Mion was puzzled, trying to find the right thing to say, but then she gave me a hearty laugh to break herself out of that mire. <laughs> this old man's just no good at this stuff. Having a poor vocabulary hurts. What's this all of a sudden? If you have something to say, just say it. Stop it. Stop that swinging. She cut straight to the point. Her request was so frank I didn't understand it for a moment. I'd already stopped swinging to listen to her, hadn't I? I just stopped, didn't I? That's not what I meant. I want today to be the last day you swing that bat. I'm sorry. It took me some time to understand what she was asking for. Because that was of her friend... Her friends, right? (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong with swinging a bat? Why? None of your business, is it? I'm not bothering anyone, am I? You are. Mion said it flat out. That didn't make any sense, and that was really irritating. When did I bother anyone? Uh, 
um... Mion was at a loss for words, but she finally made up her mind and spoke. Though she stuttered as she said it. Because, Kei-chan, that... That's someone else's bat. You shouldn't borrow it without permission. It was left behind by a student who transferred, right? I'm just borrowing it until he comes back for it. Huh? Uh, yeah, he transferred. Mion grew uncharacteristically flustered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh he transferred um <laughs> into a different gender. All st- stop stop. <laughs> <laughs> that made it all too clear that his transfer was a lie. But it's kind of strange, ain't it? For the older brother to transfer by himself, while his little sister stayed behind. Mian couldn't hide her reaction as my word, word shook her up. Kei-chan, you knew? Satoshi Hojo, Sadako's older brother, right? The one demoned away last year. Unable to respond to that, Mion fell silent. Rena asked the same thing. Why did you start swinging that bat? She told me Satoshi did the same thing, practicing his swings right before he went missing. So, is this some kind of omen for Oyashirosama's curse? Shh! Mion panicked and looked around. Please, Keichan, don't mention Oyashirosama so recklessly. I don't believe in him, but the others very much do. Rena especially. Dangerously so? Anyway, you're scaring everyone. If you're just fooling around, then stop it. You have to stop acting like Satoshi. I was the one who was scared. Who do I have to thank for taking up this bat in the first place? But it still unsettled me knowing that my actions were overlapping with Satoshi's. It would be one thing if someone else suggested it, but I thought it was making my own decisions. I'll say this now. I don't know anything about Satoshi. After all, you didn't tell me anything about him. We didn't mean to hide it. You were hiding the incidents that happen every year, weren't you? Uh, That's because we didn't want to... uh, You didn't want to scare me? That's your reason for leaving me out? No, we didn't mean to. Mio and I asked you directly if something happened at the dam, didn't I? And you told me nothing happened. When someone was dismembered and murdered, you lied to me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lie to you. Friends, don't hide things from each other, right, Mio? Isn't that right? Then all of you aren't my friends! Kei-chan, we- Mion looked helpless and flustered. Was I imagining the tears in her eyes? I never could have imagined Mion acting like this. Oh, by the way, those get well mochi you brought the other day? They were so good, I thought I was going to bleed. Who did it? Was it you or was it Rena? Me. She admitted it so easily. I couldn't help but be surprised at how easy that was. You could have killed me, you know. How could you do that to a friend? But it was just a little prank. Mion gave me a wry smile mixed with confusion, causing even more anger to well up inside me. You think that was a prank? I grabbed Mion by the collar and lifted her up. That wasn't the same as putting Tabasco sauce on a piece of mochi. It was a needle. A sewing needle. If I had swallowed that and it lodged my throat, what did she think would happen? Mion's face froze as her body rattled in fear. This wasn't the Mion Sonazaki I knew anymore. Anyway, you're not my friend. There's no reason for me to listen to someone who's not my friend. So just leave me alone for a little while. You got that? Mion wasn't replying anymore. (laughs) It won't be that easy to erase me, you know. The cops have been onto you from the start. So don't think you can make me disappear like you did to him. I said it clearly. This was my declaration of war. I think y'all are suspects in the previous incidents, too. I know you spent a lot of time with the cops ever since the anti-dam movement. Don't think you can hide it from me, you got that? How... how did you know? Mion stood there with a dumbstruck look on her face. That was when I heard the principal ringing the bell for school. It was time for morning homeroom. Let's go. The class representative needs to be there, right? At that moment... For the first time, I realized Mion was sobbing as tears ran down her cheeks. You, you're so mean, Kei-chan. Something tragic happened in their lives and they're trying to move past it and you're just- ah! <laughs> Everything here has a sensible explanation, you- <laughs> Now here's something interesting. Did you catch- did you catch her reaction when Keichi mentioned Oyashiro-sama's curse? The, uh, the, uh, I don't believe in it, but the others very much do. Yeah, and- 
don't talk about it. Don't say that so loudly. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in it, but the others do, especially Rena. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I don't know. I haven't been focusing my train of thought on that as much yet because I, f I feel like we also talked about this for a little bit. Um, I feel like we're not getting a whole lot now. At this point in the narrative, we're not being fed up enough information to really determine with any clarity what was happened in the past and how it's related to this curse. Uh, right now, what we're getting is a whole lot of stuff about Keiichi's state of mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what, so that's what I've been thinking about. But I don't really... Until we learn more details about the past and how it relates to the girls now and, and like, how they feel about it, I don't know that I have anything else to add on to it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we haven't... It's just we haven't learned anything new about that recently. It's just been Keiichi jumping to a lot of conclusions all by himself and creating this paranoia. Have we learned nothing at all new? It's not that we haven't learned nothing at all new. It's just that, like... Not so much that my that's where my head's been at. Yeah, it's all it's all a matter of how much is real and how much is in Keiichi's mind, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. The stuff with Satoshi still seems weird, but I don't know. Trans Rena theory. Trans Rena theory. What are you What are you gonna do, huh? <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, to, uh, to be honest, my my opinions on the stuff in the past still stands as it is now. It was a bunch of traumatic events in their lives that they're probably trying to move past now. Hmm. And because some of them are young, maybe they attribute it to Oyashiro Sama's curse and they're like maybe that just helps them make sense of what is otherwise something that is horrible and random. Hmm. Like okay. things don't always happen for sensible reasons. And creating a sensible reason can help bring some resolution to it even if it isn't real. That's true. You know what I mean? I I again, I feel like I need to have more context about either what happened or how they relate to it. Hmm. And we're learning some from her reaction right here, but not so much that I feel I need to change what I've gotten into anyway. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you're asking makes me think I missed something. So <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's an interesting thing. Like we've had all this theory brought up that maybe all the villagers are in on this thing. Yep. And then we have Mion here saying, I don't believe in the curse, but others do. Mm -hmm. And also you shouldn't talk about it. And Rena especially believes in it. And it's like, that, that that's kind of interesting. If there is a conspiracy, what does that say about it? If there and if there isn't, then what does that say about it? Right, that there are different reactions to it? If anything, that seems to... If like, anything, the different... If it was the kind of thing where it's a conspiracy the whole town was in on it, then they'd have a party line, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the kids weren't fully brought up into it yet, but at least Rena and Mion would be old enough to know the party line by now. That's true. So the fact that they have different opinions on it tells me that it's not like a village-wide conspiracy. If it was, it would have been taught to them much earlier on to, you know, what to say in these situations. Hmm. It seems more like... And, and Rena grew up in the town when she was younger, so, like, that's... She would have known. It feels more to me like it's just something that everyone is kind of aware is around there, but no one really knows who or what is involved in it. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, like, maybe they have their own personal suspicions about what it is or what it means, but I doubt it's a town-wide conspiracy. Fair I, enough. I, I, yeah. Cause it, it just If it was a town-wide conspiracy, these two would have been coached better on what to say. Mm-hmm. And Mio, and especially someone who's putting herself in a position of being a caretaker for for two younger kids, presumably, <laughs> uh, she definitely would have uh, made sure to keep the party line with people depending on her. And she's she's got an important family, right? Like yeah. prefectural assembly member. You gotta you gotta look good. Exactly. The, otherwise, you you're can't gonna go around cause problems for your political family members. Mm -hmm. We haven't really explored how much of that angle comes into it yet because it got brought up. It got brought up like once mm -hmm. and then never again. But yeah, like she does come from an important family. It could be she knows people that pull strings. But again, we haven't learned much more new stuff about it recently. So I'm like, I don't know. I I feel like I I just be like connecting dots without any rhyme or reason to him right now. Fair enough. And I don't want to be just randomly paranoid. <laughs> we know what being randomly <laughs> oh, paranoid gets. Oh, but it's gets so me. fun. It is fun, but it's also not helpful. So, But then again, that's why we play games like this, right? Give that paranoia an outlet. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Remember, if you're always looking out, they can't get you unawares. I don't think that's how that works. I wanted to console her, but I shut my mouth. I had no need to feel guilty. I'm going. Don't be late for homeroom. I left Mio and still shaking as I turned around to head for the entrance. I had no idea how troubling it was to make a girl cry. Behind my back, I could hear her muttering. It was a faint mutter as if she was speaking to herself. And again, the fact that Rena's first reaction to being um, injured is saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, over and over and over again. Yeah. Let's not forget, to, like, I, f- I feel like we brushed past that because a lot of it was happening, but I don't. I want to make sure we state, I want to make sure that it's not left implied, but that this is stated aloud. That's the behavior of someone who was abused, mm-hmm. right? That's someone who has been the victim of abuse and who has learned that the only way to get through it is to, re- like, try to apologize to make it stop Mm. because you don't know what else to do. (sighs) The more I play this game, the sadder I get. (laughs) It'll be worth it. So that's how it is. Huh? She wasn't saying it to anyone. It was like Mion was talking to herself, but it was a sobbing voice that had a kind of giddy, cursing tone. I inadvertently stopped and turned back toward her. So it was... That bastard. He leaked it all to Keichan. She balled up her fists as tears continued to rain down. She glared at a spot on the ground with a terrifying yet smiling face, cursing. A chill ran down my spine from that demonic expression. This transformation. Mion's transformation was different from Rena's. I should have killed him back then. He forgot the mercy I showed him just because he was going to retire this year. Retiring this year? Was she talking about Oishisan? Oh, God. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I am going to kill that damn old man. Ugh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I felt like the air itself had begun distorting. With Mion at the center, the world had begun to twist and spiral, bending, whirling. This was the first time I'd know. No experience such a visage. Rise! Attention! Mion made it up an excuse for her red eyes by saying there was something wrong with her contacts. After that, neither Rena nor Mion spoke to me for the rest of the day. Neither Sadako nor Rikachan looked me in the eye. Strangely, I didn't feel hurt. Everything had just went back to the way it was. The month since I transferred in had been almost too much fun. That was all. School was supposed to be something like this to begin with. I should have disliked that feeling, but today it felt oddly refreshing. The bell rung, sounding the end of the monotonous school day, which had felt so tense yet so dull. Since it would cause a lot of unpleasant memories if they asked me to join the club activities, I promptly started preparing to go home without even looking at them. I stuffed the contents of my desk into my bag, wrapped my hand around Satoshi's now familiar bat, and began heading toward the entrance. I was assailed by both the exhausting relief that nothing had happened today, and the tiring possibility of the same thing repeating tomorrow, but... Deep down inside of me, far beneath in the recesses of my heart, achingly I knew this would be the last day of this cycle. I couldn't tell how the ending would be, whether it would end as I wished it to end or if it would end as I hoped it wouldn't. Regardless, in my current state, there was something more important than how things would end. There was something I wanted to know. Why did I have to be killed? How did it come to this? Why? For what purpose? The sunlight was relentless. The sun, the heat, even the air, they wouldn't give me my answers. Or could it be that the cries of the Higurashi were desperately trying to tell me something? Somewhere, mixed in with their shrieks, Tamatake-san and Satoshi were also probably trying to tell me something. I simply haven't been able to realize it yet. (laughs) When I do realize it, I wonder if I will be amongst the Higurashi, fruitlessly crying to the next victim. Glancing down at my feet, I saw Higurashi on its back, spasming weakly. Bwee, 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 bwee. There was still much of the summer left, yet this one was already chirping its last song. I couldn't tell what it was saying, no matter how hard I listened. But I had to try. I had 
to try and listen to what it was desperately trying to tell me. At that moment, the shrills of the Higurashi seized all at once, as if they had huddled together fearing that the person who'd brought them to their dreadful fate had arrived. There was no mistaking it. A presence was approaching. The sound of footsteps was almost non-existent. If the Higurashi hadn't warned me by ending their chirping, I wouldn't have noticed. My exhaustion left me in a heartbeat. It, in its place was a rush of adrenaline that sharpened all of my senses. I was just barely able to hold back that creeping, suffocating feeling of horror. It wasn't something I could hold back for long, but in this moment, when I needed to be razor sharp, I was able to retain my composure. I wasn't going to shout like I did yesterday. I hid myself calmly amongst the trees, waiting for my pursuer's shadow. Could I get them to pass by me? Well, since I was able to hear their footsteps, they were probably also able to hear mine. Might have already been able to tell that I'd hidden myself and was holding my breath. The person tailing me, was it Rena just like yesterday? If it was Rena, then I couldn't hold back. I could just yell at her and make her go ahead like yesterday. If it wasn't Rena, it would depend on how they acted, I suppose. The footsteps ambled closer. I swallowed, wiped my clammy hands on my pants, and readjusted my grip on the bat. I could tell that the fear I'd beaten back was once now waiting for another opening to come at me. Who could it be? I peeked out from behind the tree at the person following me. My imagination hadn't led me astray. It was Rena. There was a bit of relief as I realized it was someone I knew, but that feeling left me in an instant. I wonder if the updated sprites give her like a wrap around her hands. Nope. Hmm. Perfectly fine hands. I see. This wasn't the same Rena that I knew. Her eyes were dark and lifeless, but her mouth appeared as if it was carved into a crescent. Yes, it looked like she was grinning slightly. And in her right hand was an axe. I hid myself behind the tree once again and recalled the unbelievable sight I just saw. What was that just now? The embodiment of terror laid bare. Baseball practicing my swing, there were tons of excuses for me to be carrying a bat. But for that axe, there was no excuse for that. An axe, just like that. Keichi-kun, are you playing hide-and-seek, I wonder? I wonder. The weird thing is we have established a reason for her to be carrying an axe. Yeah. Yeah, just going to find something at the junkyard, being cute. But what's weirder is that Keiichi left school before everyone else. Yep. Rena has to go the same way home that he does. Yep. She didn't bring an axe to school with her. Yeah. How does she have an axe now? <laughs> I've I... always got my emotional support axe. Hammer space. <laughs> Why don't people talk about hammer space anymore? That was a good trope. <laughs> I say it was a good trope and then realize most of it was rooted in misogyny. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take that one back. <laughs> huh. So I guess my question is like, also, if her hand was still wounded from yesterday, she wouldn't be gripping an axe. She's got two hands. She's got two hands, but didn't it say it was specifically in... In her right hand. Did the it say her right hand was the injured one? I thought it said her right hand was the injured one. I could be wrong, but like it said that it got caught in the door. And when you look at the way the door opens in the image, it would have to be her right hand if she was standing in front of the door with a hand in it. Hmm. I, again, that's probably just nothing, but um, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sold that this is what's happening here. Devil's advocate, if someone you thought was your friend suddenly snapped, started swinging a bat at you, and then broke all your fingers, might you be a little wary to be walking home alone? Sure. But then why didn't she bring it to school with her? Why does she have it now? Where did she get it? Hmm. Because I perfectly believe that, but like, like that, that, sure. But she didn't have it with her. You can conceal an axe. No, you can't. Stop that. I will get an axe and conceal it. <laughs> On your person? I'll do it. Please don't. That actually sounds dangerous. <laughs> like, I'm thinking it through right now. I'm like, no, there's no way that ends in a way that's... No, please don't do that. I'm pretty sure I could do it. 
kind of like a, oh wait no that would have been a spoiler for that game i'm glad i didn't go that <laughs> you know what i'm talking about though. i have no idea no I all right know. i'll tell you later my heart was pounding hard enough that i had trouble breathing what little composure i had been able to hold on to was now crushed and its place cold sweat gushed forth covering my entire body letting me know precisely what kind of emotion had taken hold not good not good not good i wasn't able to hide myself completely she already knew i was here were you trying to scare me, I wonder? I wonder. I decided it would be better to reveal myself now, since there was still space between us, than allow her to come any closer. I adjusted my grip on the bat again, ready myself mentally, and stepped out from behind the tree. <laughs> I found you, Keichi-kun. Rena was pleased that she found me, eliciting a mysterious giggle. Her mouth was smiling, but her eyes told me she was displeased by the fact that I had been hiding. Those eyes, whose are they? <laughs> <laughs> eh, all right. They were just so empty. My legs began to quiver. <sighs> Not good. In the pit of my stomach, some sort of viscous, hot, and cold substance began spreading around. If I allowed it, that substance would slip into my bloodstream and undoubtedly freeze all the organs in my body. Not good. Not good. I'd be devoured by Rena at this rate. Strike back! Don't lose! What? What is it? I blustered, hiding behind my bravado. But Rena didn't flinch one bit. Just the same as Kei Chikun. I'm heading home. Then what about that axe? Then what about that bat you're holding? I'm practicing my swing, as we've established. Then I'm treasure hunting. Rena gave a flippant explanation as to why she had such a fearsome weapon. Treasure hunting? At the treasure mountain near the dam site, I found a new cute thing. So I needed this to dig it out. How could I believe that? You wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> Rena's laugh was obviously very strange. I'd seen her transformation many times before, but the one today was completely different. Like her mischievous tone and the shrewd glint in her eyes, it wasn't something that roundabout. I'm not sure what to say, it was just so obvious. Wait, Kei <laughs> Rena didn't stop walking, even as she let out that eerie laugh. Whenever Rena got too close to me, I would scurry away and turn back towards her. The cycle repeated over and over. No matter how you looked at it, I was being chased by Rena and was trying to escape. Don't follow me! I can't do that. My house is this way, after all. <laughs> when I met with Rena on this road yesterday, she cowered and trembled as she followed my commands. But today was different. Rena didn't show a hint of trepidation. Actually, wasn't I the one who was cowering? If the way home for Rena and me was the same, that's fine. I just changed my route. That would work out, wouldn't it? I turned onto a side street I'd never been down and knew little about. But Rena saw me do that and followed me a little while laughing. Why? 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 Aren't you going home? Then just go home down the street you normally do. Why would you follow me down this weird little side road? Those thoughts screamed in my head, eventually spilling out of my mouth. Why are you following me? The tone of my voice was already tinged with terror. Because I want to talk to Kei Chikun. Kei Chikun wants to talk to Rena too, doesn't he? Doesn't he? I don't want to talk about anything with you! That's a lie, isn't it? There's something you want to ask me about, isn't there? Not at all! I have nothing to talk to you about! That's a lie, isn't it? It's not a lie! Lies! When a scream echoed, startling some nearby birds into flight. I cringed in fear. The only other thing I could do was increase my pace. Let's talk, Kei Chikun. Talk. Talk. <laughs> Why was I running down this unfamiliar and deserted street? Doesn't Kei Chikun have something he's worried about? N nothing at all. I'm not worried about anything. Lies. <laughs> even though I was running, even though Rena was walking, why wasn't I getting any farther away? I know, I know, I really do know. You're scared, aren't you, Kei Chikun? I am not scared! I'm not scared of anything! Lies! <laughs> my breathing grew heavy, and it felt like my legs were giving out from beneath me. Rena wasn't even breaking a sweat. I'll listen. This time I'll listen. I had no idea what she was talking about or what exactly she wanted to do. This time I'll listen. It will be different from the time with Satoshi-kun. When she said Satoshi's name, I turned back for a moment. But even as I did that, Rena was still advancing. 
I couldn't afford to stop. Satoshi-kun was worried, too. It looked like he was having such a hard time. But I didn't listen. I was so sad. Where did the street connect to? All these twists and turns, ups and downs. It was hard to believe that this was even remotely the direction towards my house. My sense of direction had long since gone out the window. I really regretted it when Satoshi-kun transferred out. I thought that if I had listened, he may not have transferred out. I really regretted that. The road led me deeper into the forest. Wasn't I getting farther away from the village more the, the more I ran? I lost more and more of my composure the more I thought about it, but despite this realization, my inner self was still disturbingly calm. So you see, I vowed. I vowed that if there was someone struggling like Satoshi-kun did, I'd save them. I don't want to see anyone transfer out again. <laughs> damn it, damn it, what does transfer even mean? I won't let you transfer me. I won't end up the same as Satoshi. Come on, Keichi-kun, talk to me. I'll be able to understand you, Keichi-kun. I'm your ally. See, it's her, his friend is worried about him. They're like, I, we didn't pay enough attention to Satoshi and he wound up leaving. You know, and we can see that you're struggling. Will you please tell us what's going on? I started wheezing out of breath. My lungs were so hot that they felt like they were going to explode and my heart was beating as hard as it possibly could. I should have practiced running instead of my swing. Couldn't even afford to scoff at that stupid thought. If Keiichi-kun doesn't have anything to worry about, he'll go back to normal. Everyone will be back to being friends, and we can enjoy club activities again. Next time, we'll team up and beat Michan. <laughs> what if, synthesis of previous theories, what if she actually does have an axe here, and she's like, oh, Keiji's in the same position we are. Someone needs to disappear from the curse. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't worry, we won't let it, like, if you're being abused, we will help you out, buddy. You've got friends who are willing to go the distance for you. <laughs> Well-armed friends. I will hide a body for you, Keiichi. No questions asked. Yeah, how much fun that would be. <laughs> Ren, I couldn't even imagine how much I wished I could turn back the clock on these past few days. You could be nice to me again, too. I want to go searching for treasure again. This time I'll prepare a nice lunch. Actually, we could just go right now. Let's go up to the dam site together. I'll show you the cute thing I just found. I'm sure you'll like it, too. <laughs> my footsteps made pathetic flapping sounds as my legs wobbled and faltered. Hot on my heels, Rena's steps were sharply breaking twigs underfoot. I had to accept it. I was on the run and being chased by Rena. If she caught me, it was all over. I realized it instinctively. I couldn't even begin to think of what the end would entail. Just that if I was caught, then it was all over. That's all I knew. But it didn't matter how it was going to end. I wouldn't let it end. Not without knowing... Not without knowing anything. Not yet. That momentary lapse was all it took. Of all the things that could have happened, my knees buckled underneath me, and I crumbled toward the ground. I tried to stand frantically, urging my legs to respond. I used my bat as a makeshift cane to prop myself up, but Rena was already standing right in front of me. Compared to me, out of breath and utterly exhausted, Rena was so cool and composed that she could have froze the air around her. She wasn't breathing hard at all. Rather, I couldn't even sense if her heart was beating. Are you afraid of something, I wonder? It's not like you to tremble, Keiichi-kun. <laughs> her expression looked almost affectionate. Those soulless eyes, that mask of affection. As she admonished me for trembling, Rena's hands deftly slipped over her head. The blur of arms as they move made me feel as if I was staring at the godliness of the thousand-armed Buddha. And then as both of her arms, hands met above her head, the axe that she held came into focus. I stared up at it in disbelief. It was all I could do. Tell me. Tell me what happened to Satoshi! Rana stayed like that with the axe raised above her head and solemnly opened her mouth. It was as if she was expressing a farewell to a friend she was never to see again. That cruel scenario resided somewhere in her actions. I told you, Satoshi-kun transferred out. Enough of that transfer crap! Uh. It means demoned away, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Mm. You can tell me now, can't you? Who made Satoshi disappear? Was it you? 
Mion? Or someone in the village? Answer me! I became frantic the more I screamed, but Rena did nothing but maintain the smile frozen upon her face. I have no idea what Kei Chikun is talking about. I'll say it in a way so that you do. Who is the perpetrator of this chain of mysterious deaths? You seem to be confused, Kei Chikun. What? There is no human perpetrator. Everything is by Oyashiro-sama's will. Isn't it cursed to superstition? You believe in that too? It's not about believing or not. Oyashiro-sama exists. Period. And exists is in quotes. Mm -hmm. We'll have some stuff to say that at the break at the end of the episode, so stay (laughs) tuned for that. Rena's gaze grew even more gelid. The ferocity of her stare was so intense, not allowing me to question anything. There's just no way that something like Oyashiro-sama could exist. You don't believe in Oyashiro-sama? There's no way I could believe it. There's no way it could exist. It exists. Oyashiro-sama exists. Keiichi-kun should have felt it personally. Never felt something like that. Keiichi-kun, haven't you felt someone apologizing to you before? Constantly, on top of that? All the noise from the outside world disappeared. Only Rena's voice resounded loudly and terribly. You see, until you forgive them, they'll always be with you. At school, at home, at your bedside. I couldn't understand what Rena was saying. It came to me, too. Oyashiro-sama did. That's why I transferred and came back to Hinamisawa. I don't understand. I don't understand. What does transfer even mean? What was Rena saying? Hasn't Oyashiro-sama come to you as well, Keiichi-kun? I'm probably the only one who you can confide in. I won't let you transfer out, okay? (laughs) Wait, that's Rena laughing. Oh, come on. That's That's good. That's good. Rena's demented laughter clanged around inside of my head. Was she saying Oyashiro-sama came to her as well? well? That's right. Last night I heard about that when I asked about Rena. Hey, this is the time for a flashback. Yeah, all right. Please keep this confidential. Also, part of this may be speculation. Not all of it may be true. Are you still interested? Oishi-san began speaking. Neither the victims nor the school filed a complaint, so there's no preliminary report. Basically, the police had an interview in this matter. So all these details are just what I heard from those involved. Meaning that it ain't credible. You said there were victims. Didn't Rena just break all the windows? No. Rena Ryugu had attacked three boys. Using a metal bat. Two of them made it out with only bruises, but the other had been injured so badly that one of his eyes was permanently damaged. Wouldn't that be considered assault? Shouldn't the police have arrested her? For whatever reason, the victim never pressed charges. There weren't no report to the police, so... They were beaten with a bat, and suffered significant injuries. Normally there'd be a criminal investigation, but why didn't they press charges? I tried asking the three male victims for their side of the story, but they were all reluctant. Hard to say, but they were all afraid, even after she transferred schools. Oishi san could you summarize it starting from the beginning? Rena P- hit people while she broke the windows. Or was it she started breaking the windows after she got bored of hitting people? They sounded similar, but the meanings were drastically different. On an undisclosed date, Rena Ryugu was conversing with three male students, close friends of hers, near the pool storage shed. Who were those three? I can't reveal their names, but they were close to Rena Ryugu, and it seems they were a group of friends. She was the lone girl in their group. So it wasn't that strange that the four of them were together. So what happened? I don't know the reason why. She took the baseball team's bat with that was in the pool storage shed and beat the three of them down one after the other. What? There were no witnesses. This was an account pieced together by the information given at the time of the incident. One day after school, Rena and three male students were at the pool storage shed talking together. They weren't seeking help. Rather, they just usually met up there. It appears it became a heated discussion. At that time, Rena underwent a change. No, you're inserting this now, buddy. 
The change was so abrupt that the three of them didn't comprehend what was happening. Then, taking the metal bat, she attacked her friends one after the other, leaving her friends covered in blood with gashes on their head. She made her way towards the school building. Then she broke the glass windows one after the other. A few minutes later, a teacher appeared on the scene and subdued her. What is this change Rena underwent? What well, matches up in the statements from the three was a sudden change. The point that there was a transformation. Transformation? I also could recall Rena's transformation. I'd seen that change many times before. It was so different from the usual Rena that I couldn't help but believe it was someone else who looked like her. The transformation they're talking about, had it happened before? Nah, there weren't nothing like that. As far as I could find out in her medical history and past, there weren't nothing like that. Does that happen often? Where people change suddenly like Rena did? Of course it does. Plenty of psychological phenomena that could cause any sort of thing like that. You're saying there was a dormant element in Rena that caused the transformation? I cannot say that for certain, but according to the statements of her friends, it's hard to believe she had such a side to her kind, caring, and adorable. Even before she transferred here, she was probably pretty popular in school like she was now. That girl transforming suddenly and assaulting them with a bat. Who could imagine such a thing? Nobody could have seen it coming. I, myself, sometimes believe that I was mistaken for thinking that was Rena even now. Then what happened after that? There was a hospital right across from the school, so the three of them were carried in and treated quickly. And what about Rena? What about the police? Why wasn't there a criminal investigation? <laughs> You see, the police can't get involved unless they be called. Even though one was badly injured with permanent damage? Why did they file charges? That's what caught my attention as well. Either some threat or pressure was placed upon them, or they had a reason they couldn't file charges even if they wanted to. We're talking about you after all. Of course you looked into it, right? Well, yeah, but I told you at the beginning, didn't I? The victims were all very reluctant to talk. They didn't want to touch on the matter, or rather, they didn't want to be involved. Reluctant to talk. Didn't want to touch it. Didn't want to be involved. It resembled the villagers here in Oyashiro-sama's curse. Did the teacher at that school tell you anything? The school is a hallowed ground. You could say they tend to keep scandals under wraps. I didn't have a search warrant, so I had to tread lightly, you see. Then there was no comment from the school. No, they denied the incident ever occurred. It's just... It's just three male students were carried in for the blunt force trauma that day. That's all there was in the hospital records. So no record of the windows? I mean, presumably there was, given that he's talking about it. There wouldn't be a record of the windows in the hospital records. I guess, yeah. The victims didn't speak. The school denied it happened. Then you don't know anything at all! Yeah, I know nothing other than the incident itself had taken place. The victims also wish this incident to be kept from the public. So if you and I both forget about it, May Barrasan, then this incident will probably just fade away. For a brief period, we sat in silence. At first glance, it looked like a simple assault case, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. The depths were obscured by the roiling waves, sinking quietly into the void as if it never existed to begin with. After that, she was suspended by the school, and during that time, she underwent psychiatric counseling. Do you hear anything from that doctor? Again, they were very professional in regard to their ethics. Or at least very tight-lipped. Ha! And nothing even after you show them your badge. I was told to get a warrant. The badge itself has no legally binding authority, after all. How did you know that Rena, Rena confessed that it was Oyashiro Sama who did it? There was a nurse asked in that department. She agreed to help me just from showing her my badge. Then what did she say? Hmm, a nurse, huh? Okay. Okay. Turns out the nurse hadn't heard everything. Apparently all that she remembered was what she overheard from inside the room. The nurse at the time, Rena Ryugu, was... The nurse said at the time that Rena Ryugu was very calm and mild-mannered. It was more like she was confessing her sins at church than a counseling session. She spoke with her mother there for some of it. But partway through, her mother was asked to leave, so it became a private counseling session between just the doctor and Rena for a while. The part with Oyashiro-sama, when did that pop up? Partway through. 
She screamed the name suddenly. That startled the nurse, and that's why she started listening in. It was Oyashiro-sama. Rena suddenly shouted that. I had no idea what was said before that, so I had no idea what the meaning behind it could have been. The doctor calmly and collectedly asked Rena to have a seat. What is this Oyashiro Sama you speak of? Gently, ever so gently. The fundamentals of counseling were believing what you were told. Whoever abandons Hinamizawa will be hunted down by Oyashiro Sama, and they've finally gotten to me. That's the town you lived in before you moved here, isn't that right, Ryugu san? I didn't want to move, but because of my mom and dad's circumstances, we had to, but Oyashiro Sama wouldn't allow it. Uh, Ryugu-san must have lots of friends in Hinamizawa. Even now, you must be missing them dearly, don't you think? I want to go back. Back to Hinamizawa. No, it's not that I want to go back. I have to go back. I should have gone back much sooner, but now it's too late. Oyashiro-sama has come. Uh, Oyashiro-sama is the name of the god in Hinamizawa, isn't that right? Everyone knows, it's Hinamizawa's guardian deity, and if you ever try abandoning Hinamizawa by leaving, you'll incur his wrath. Uh, you had moved quite a while ago, didn't you? Then it was just now that this god has arrived, is what you're saying? You might not believe me, but Oyashiro-sama exists. That nurse was then asked by another nurse to do something and left the room. That was all she remembered. That it was Oyashiro-sama's doing, right? I do believe there is that kind of superstition in Hinamizawa. That if you leave the village, then you incur Oyashiro-sama's wrath. You should be familiar with this part, Meibara-san. I knew very well what those scorned by the village incurred. To hinder the damn construction project, they cursed the construction foreman to his death. And then the following year, Sadako's parents, the supporters, leading, leading advocates for the dam, were cursed to their death. But this was the first time I've heard of the curse incurred by leaving the village. This is my first time hearing that. I can understand outside threats being cursed by the village, but why also villagers who leave? Normally people who leave villages aren't supposed to be cursed, right? I know it's a bit strange to say it, but I could see it as a rule that the people who come in are the ones who would be cursed. Far from Jupiter, far from his thunder. Curses weren't something to chase after people that leave, were they? Oishi-san pondered for a bit over on the other end of the receiver and then began speaking again. Well, I told you long ago when Hinamizawa was called Onigafuchi, didn't I? I recalled hearing that. Long ago, Hinamizawa was feared and respected as the village of ogres. Villages at the foot of the mountains worshipped the ogres, so the Onigafuchi was a hallowed ground that you could never enter. It came to be said that if you entered carelessly, you were cursed by Yoroshiro Sama. Those who set foot in Onigafuchi in other words, Hinamizawa would be cursed. I could understand that. I know that. But for leaving also to be no good, that's... Also them ogres, you see. They were being strictly watched by Oyoshiro sama so they would not enter our world. In other words, Oyoshiro sama probably restricted interaction between the Onigafuchi and the rest of the world. I see. I finally understood what sort of thing Oyoshiro sama was. So basically, Oyashiro-sama is more like a warden than a protectorate deity, I guess. Trying to keep this place isolated from the rest of the world. I guess that's how it would seem. I'm sorry, I don't know very much myself. This is mostly what was passed on to me from my grandmama. I could understand it a bit better if it was like that. Those who came to Hinamizawa would be cursed, and those who tried to leave would also be cursed. So because Rena originally lived in Hinamizawa and moved away, she fulfilled the requirements for being cursed. So that means because she moved away against its wishes, Rena was cursed by Oyoshiro-sama? Is that what this adds up to? In short, that seems to be what it points to, I suppose. As a matter of fact, soon afterwards they did move back to Hinamizawa after all. Those who abandoned Hinamizawa and left were cursed. But then why only Rena? Shouldn't Rena's parents also have been guilty of the same transgression by moving away and have been cursed? Also, in this day and age in Japan, Shouldn't there have been a lot of people coming and going? If every single one of them was cursed, then it'd be insane, but... In reality, it wasn't that big of a deal at all. At most, there would be one person dying, and one person disappearing, on the day of the Watanagashi. 
I don't like saying at most, though. Well, anyway, there are a lot I still don't know. Even if it was Oyashiro Sama's curse, it don't add up to why her classmates, the victims who were beaten with a metal bat, would impress charges. Oh, this is. Oh, this is. Anyways, there's a lot I still don't know. Even if it was up to Oyashiro Sama's curse, it doesn't add up to why her classmates, the victims who were beaten with a metal bat, would impress charges. You don't think the victims were cowering because they believed a terrible curse had befallen them, do you? Of course, I didn't want to believe it. But more importantly, I had just realized something else. There was another bizarre connection that Rena had made between Oyashiro Sama's curse and metal bats. Satoshi fell victim to Oyashiro Sama's curse and went missing. I'd recently learned that Satoshi had also become infatuated with the metal bat right before he disappeared, just like me. And then Rena as well. She was affected by Oyashiro Sama's curse. She confessed that much to the doctor. And the weapon which she had used at the time of that horrendous act was again a metal bat. And finally, me. I had encountered various things that were inexplicable, and now I was holding on to a metal bat. I was shocked when I learned that Satoshi did the same thing. Couldn't be. Had the same thing happened to Rena? But there was one critical difference between her and Satoshi's case. That being, Satoshi went victim, missing after falling victim to the curse, but Rena was still here. Both of them had fallen victim to Oyashiro-sama's curse, and yet they met with different endings. And finally, me. I couldn't call it a coincidence anymore. Rena, Satoshi, and finally me. Could it be either that I was really under Oyashiro-sama's curse right now? More importantly than that, what should I do? Satoshi had been demoned away, vanishing without a trace. Rena was fine. Fine? Rena had undergone a change. I could only believe that there was something that wasn't Rena residing within her. And here, right now, it was standing before me. All right, hey, we're back to the whole uh, slasher bit. <laughs> I mean, always a great time for an interruption for a flashback. Absolutely. N never not a good time. Rena, please tell me what'll happen to me. Rena stood imposingly, not answering. Satoshi disappeared, but... Oh. Satoshi disappeared, but Rena didn't. So what will happen to me? <laughs> I had never heard such an unpleasant laugh before. It had become akin to the sound of her breathing. It was no longer a voice or an expression of feeling. Don't worry, I'll save you. Rena took one step forward, still holding the axe high above her head. Now then... One step closer, Rena's face spread out to fill my vision. Speak. One step closer. Rena's nose was so close to touch mine, and was still pushing closer. There's something you want to say, isn't there? I'll listen. I'll save you, okay? Speak, okay? Speak, okay? I slumped down, landing squarely on my butt. It wasn't for some pathetic reason. It was all I could do to get as far away from Rena. <laughs> I had the gut feeling that I couldn't let her laughter end. Because when that laughing ended... The moment I picked up on that feeling, my body moved by instinct. I sprang to my feet so fast that even I couldn't believe it. And pushed Rena away with both hands. Rena was as light as a feather. Thrown about by the unbalanced weight of the axe, she was sent backwards as if she had been carried off by the wind. After confirming that out of the corner of my eye, I dashed off at full speed. I was the perfect picture of fleeing like a greased pig. Get away from Rena. Run away. Survive! I couldn't think anything other than this. And while I was running, I remembered I'd been holding on to the bat the entire time. Such a worthless weapon. Couldn't believe I'd forgotten about this weapon at such an important time. I sped even farther down the winding path. I didn't even feel myself gasping for breath or my legs getting heavy. My body understood it as well. If I didn't run away from here, I wouldn't live. I could hear the laughter of that simulacrum of Rena coming from behind me. It rang through the trees and in my head and slowly chiseled away at my sanity. The grove of trees thinned out, my field of vision suddenly expanding. Where was this? For a moment, I was bewildered by the scenery I felt I knew but couldn't quite remember. I quickly realized. It was the damn sight. The fact that I dashed madly and ended up in a place like this gave me a bad feeling, like I was following someone's scripted plot. I had a good view of my surroundings, but I didn't see a single soul here. This was a terrible spot for someone on the run, but there was no better place for an attacker. My heart was already on the verge of busting, bursting. The muscles of my legs were screaming, but I didn't 
care. If I stopped here, then they might not even be able to scream for much longer. Even still, I glanced back looking for an excuse to rest. Rena wasn't there. Instead, I saw two villagers walking around. I breathed a sigh of relief that it wasn't Rena, but a third party. Except the voice inside me rang the alarm once again. Villagers walking around weren't suspicious in and of themselves, but it bothered me. They both wore rough-looking clothes. Empty-handed, they definitely gave the impression that they were out for just a walk. But at this time of day, two adults wandering around without a purpose, it was enough to raise questions. But more than anything else, those eyes. They weren't chit-chatting while walking. They were both silent and heading forward, looking in my direction. Was I at the end of my rope and had finally started imagining things? I should run away. That was probably the best choice. If they weren't involved, I could lose them easily by running. If they were part of the group after me, then they would come running after me. Either way, unless I hurried up, Renna would catch up with me. That's right. I was going to run. Deciding that the moment I began to turn tail, both of them rushed towards me as if they knew exactly what I was thinking. Somewhere inside of me, I jumped to the conclusion that Renna was the only thing I needed to be afraid of. I made the assumption that I didn't need fe- I need- didn't need to fear anything else. But right now, I realized just how blatantly wrong I was. Suddenly, the story Oishi-san told me about the demons all leaving the village to hunt prey floated through the back of my mind. I could tell they were both coming after me without even turning around because of their frantic footsteps. It was frightening being una- unable to shake off Rena as she slowly closed in on me, but this didn't even compare. Being pursued with such violent ferocity, this straightforward horror was unparalleled. One of the pursuer's arms grazed my shoulder. Now it wasn't just their frenzied footsteps, but also the distinct sound of their breathing that I could hear. Though I could practically feel them breathing on me, they were right behind me! Calm down, Keichi Maibara. Still running at full tilt, I felt the surrounding area go still. Now it felt like time itself had stopped. I turned my head back slightly in that frozen world, realizing how close my pursuers had gotten to me. I couldn't win against the legs of an adult. In less than the time it would take to blink twice, when the frozen time began moving again, they would be right on top of me. On top of me, and then... Don't think about that, Keiichi. First, realize that you won't be able to shake them off like this. The fact that you can't get away was a given. They need to make a decision. Go with the right leg, or go with the left. You just need to decide which one. Let's go with the left. The moment I decided that, the temporal singularity burst into pieces. Right. Left! I swung the bat in a wide arc with my right arm, using that inertia. I stopped and suddenly spun. The two of them were clearly startled. Momentarily losing sight of me, both their outstretched arms ready to grab me instead grasped an empty space. The man on the right, I applaud him, being able to figure it out, spun around to the spot I shouldn't have been and faced me in astonishment. But it was too late! I didn't even need to swing my bat. All I needed to do was extend my arms as I turned around. It was by no means a heavy blow, but it seemed like I had enough power behind it to knock him off his feet. But just knocking him down wasn't enough to scare him away. He got back up in no time! Both of them took a fighting stance and were ready to face me. This made me certain they weren't just two people out for a walk. They were clearly after me. You ran onto it into a construction site, dude. <laughs> Abandoned, yes, but there's also like a dump here. Like there's any number of... <sighs> it felt much easier than dealing with Rena. Just by not recognizing their faces, by not knowing them, it made things easier. I smiled wryly on the inside. What do you want with me? The next one is going to be right in your face, you bastard. It's fine if it was just a bluff. By barking out at them, I was able to fire myself up. They didn't respond. They spread out to either side of me with unbelievably calm expressions on their faces. One of them would grab onto my bat and the other would hold me down. What was their plan? Taking on both of them at once would be impossible. Hot sweat poured from every pore in my body. And I just have to settle it with the first move. I step in and strike the first one down. Narrowing my target down to the man on the right who had already been knocked down before, I stepped in and swung with all my might. There was no way for an unarmed person to guard against it. It would cause immense damage. If they blocked it with their arm, their bone would snap like a twig. If they turned their back to it, it was possible the blow would travel all the way to their vital organs. Looked like he was aware of this. He pushed farther through the kill zone between us and delivered a fist right into my gut. Not good. With this distance in this position and in this state, there was no way for me to dodge it. The world flipped upside down. I understood that I was being tossed around like a rag doll. I landed on the soft earth without a sound, feeling the grainy soil press against my face. It didn't hurt at all. But the moment I thought that, 
I suddenly felt the pain coming from the abrasions on my skin, as well as the contents of my stomach being forced upwards, flooding my mouth with a bitter sensation. I knew very well that I didn't have the time to relish this experience. I stood up as quickly as I could, but at that moment, the other man was already barreling toward me. Being able to comprehend calmly that I simply couldn't dodge it made it all the more upsetting. After plowing into my stomach full force once again, my assailant twisted around behind me and locked his thick arm around my neck. My throat felt like I was being crushed by his immense strength. I couldn't even contemplate that I was being strangled, or that I was about to go unconscious. My vision simply darkened, and a silent whining noise began playing deep in my mind. I took everything I had to keep myself from blacking out. While this was happening, the other man was more than likely standing in front of me. I wasn't able to open my eyes, but I could feel that he was there. There's nothing I could do now. Unable to shake his arm off of me, I couldn't run. I couldn't fight back. Dire straits. I couldn't even come up come up the phrase that adequately described my situation. I mean, not much of a sultan of swing if he can't manage to hit him. No, but they do sound bro- like brothers in arms. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. Well then. Well then indeed. Well then indeed. What the heck just happened? Mmm, who knows? He got back home, huh? Got back home, did you, buddy? Long, slow fading. A familiar ceiling. I'm so fucked up. (laughs) The smell of the bed and pillows. I knew them well. Was this my room? Normally there wouldn't be anyone in my room besides me, but their presence made me spring wide awake. When I did that, pain shot through my entire body. Feeling alright? I think you'd better just lie down for a bit. I was Renna in my room. Blood began to surge through my muscles and my capillaries, but Renna's smile belonged to the Renna I knew well. I knew I shouldn't let myself feel this way, but I relaxed, thinking that this version of Renna was safe. Why? Why am I? Don't you remember? After losing consciousness, nothing at all. My body had become more lethargic than I could have ever imagined. I guess that would be the expected outcome after exerting everything I had back there. I tried to at least clear my head, but I just couldn't shake the sluggish feeling coming out of my mind. I called the doctor. He should be here soon. I think you'd better just lie down until then. I wasn't injured seriously enough to merit calling a doctor, but knowing that someone impartial was coming was slightly reassuring. Why am I here? I'm sure it was at the dam site. That's what I want to know. What happened? When I got there, Kei Chikun was already passed out. That's why I'm the one who wants to know. I was attacked by two weirdos. As I talked about it, I finally remembered what had happened right before I passed out. Recalling that memory and the terror that went along with it caused the fogginess around my head to clear right up. Let's forget about those two for now. I didn't expect Renna to be nursing me. I thought Renna was trying to kill me. She would have had the perfect chance while I was unconscious. Not only did she not kill me, she had nursed me back to health. Amazing you could drag me all the way back here. Wasn't I heavy? Looking at Renna's delicate frame, it was hard to believe that she had not only got me back home, but even dragged me all the way up to the second floor. Did she have someone help? Don't you remember, Kei kun Rena appeared a bit surprised, but still kept her smile. I only... I only propped you up on my shoulder. You said you could walk on your own and that you were fine. You don't remember? I didn't remember. My memory was fuzzy after the point where I lost consciousness. What about those two? Huh? When you got there, Rena, the ones with me, or rather the two guys who were... There wasn't anyone. She said it bluntly. The way she stated it felt slightly unpleasant. I was just too timid at that time. I might have been able to force some answers out of Renna. But if I did that, then this kind Renna might transform into the scary one I didn't know. Fearing that, I didn't press any further. Thinking about it, it was the obvious choice. If both those men were there, I don't think Renna would have even stood a chance. Couldn't find a way to explain it unless I assumed she brought me here after those two were already gone. Renna was still smiling. Her eyes sparkled warmly. And yet... I felt like I was hallucinating when I saw something. Something akin to a shadow slowly creeping across her face. That small omen sent shivers down my spine.
While Rena was still Rena, I needed to make a contact. I needed to contact Oishi-san. Rena stopped me when I tried to get out of the bed. She said it would aggravate my wounds, so I should sleep. I'd like to go to the bathroom, though. Uh, sorry. Rena couldn't say anything else. And while Rena stayed in the room, I quickly went downstairs to get the phone receiver in the living room. When I approached the front door, the doorbell rang ding-dong. Must have been the doctor Rena had called. Well, strange for a patient to welcome in the doctor who was making a house call, but it would be incredibly reassuring to have him here for the considerable time it would take Oishi-san to get here. I carelessly opened the door with that simple assumption and regretted it almost instantly. Sup? Leon? Strept? <laughs> oh, you look just fine. Hold on, we were arguing about this, so I want to settle this. Yeah, oh. they took away her gun in the news. They sprites. did take away her gun. Huh. Yeah, well, unfortunate. Her gun that, I want to say, I, I have some beef with you about this. Yeah? Because as I was looking back over the thing, you had just convinced me it was an airsoft. Yeah. Right. And it was only in hearing that conversation play back again that I realized that the game has never talked about once mentioned the fact that she's strapped this entire time. Nothing in this game has mentioned the fact that that is a weapon of any kind, let alone an airsoft weapon. She's just been walking around strapped and no one's commenting on it. To be fair, small town life... Yeah. Maybe you need to defend yourself against 30 to 50 feral hogs. 30 to 50 feral. Don't get me distracted again. <laughs> it's weird, right? It worked last time. God damn it. I heard you collapse, so I came to check up on you. Where did you know I collapsed? I heard from Rena over the phone. Do I need any reason other than that? I understood why she would call a doctor, but why me own too? Rena was descending the stairs behind me. Rena, doesn't Keichan look pretty all right? Sheesh, you made me worry for nothing. That's true. Maybe I worried for nothing as well. They both began laughing. It appeared to be cheerful after, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was a darkness looming over them. Whoa, what's up with this shoe rack? How did it get like this? The shoe rack I'd smashed to pieces had been set like that since yesterday. I fell, you see, and the bat I was holding at the time slammed into it. This is what happens when you swing around something you're not used to handling. I kept the fact that it was none of her business to myself. But leaving it like this will really startle your parents when they get home. I'll fix it up for you later. <laughs> now, come on, Keichan. The terminally ill need their rest. Come, come. Back in bed. Back in bed. Both of them urged me up the stairs. I had no chance to call Oishi-san. I was pushed onto my bed. As it was the first time Mion had been in my room, she began searching around it intently. She fiddled around my room and was scolded by Rena. You can imagine how it went. I'm just trying to find the porn. Wait, why do you... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I know teenage boys all have some, and I don't. And that's unfair. What? Sidebar. I know we're supposed to be enemies right now, but sidebar. You do realize the kind of porn you would find in my room, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's the kind that you are desiring to look at. <laughs> or is it more just that you feel like you should be looking at any kind of porn? <laughs> I think it's really a matter of fairness. I see, I see. In that case, you're welcome to my porn collection. Excellent, thank you. I'm glad we've come to an agreement. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, it's funny that you thought you had any say in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> it was uncomfortable having my room poked around, but the conversation was so benign that it was heartwarming. During that innocent conversation, Mion said something, though, as if it was perfectly ordinary. Rena, did you call the manager? Yep, right after I called Michan. He said he'd be right over. Manager? That out-of-place word gave me a bad feeling. Rena called a doctor, then called Mion, then after that she called a manager? Who was this manager? Since Rena and Mion's conversation was so peaceful, it only felt slightly odd. What are you two talking about? Who's this manager? <laughs> Didn't you know, Keichan? We mean the manager when we say manager. Like the director of a movie, or like a foreman of a construction site. <laughs> I dug through all my memories for a manager who might have business with me. Only one thing came to mind, what Rena had just said, the construction site foreman. The very first victim of the first incident, the dismemberment at the damn construction site, the foreman. But that was strange. He was supposed to be dead. There was no way they could call him, because when a foreman dies, they don't appoint someone else new to the job. I don't understand what you guys are talking about. What does that manager have to do with me? You said he was coming. Did you mean to my home? I asked one obvious question after another, but all the two of them did was smile coolly at each other. 
There was a huge difference between how the two of them appeared and how my suspicions were playing out. Slowly, I felt discomfort and panic welling up inside me. I couldn't understand what Rena and Mion were talking about. Okay, Chan, you've gotten into baseball lately, haven't you? Pretty sure the manager will be happy to hear that. So who was this manager? <laughs> the manager is the manager. <laughs> so who is the manager? <laughs> Rena and Mion looked at each other and laughed haughtily. That disturbing cackle unpleasantly resounded around me. <laughs> that laugh, long enough to be unsettling, ended abruptly. Oh, yeah. We should finish up before the manager comes. You remember, don't you, Kei-chan? Her face was laughing, but Mion's eyes told a different story. Remember? Remember what? <laughs> Kei-chi-kun, had he forgotten, I wonder? About the penalty. About the penalty. Did, Did you really forget? The homework with the mochi? The homework, where you were supposed to guess which one Rena made. You forgot about that homework, didn't you? I certainly did have that homework. No, he gave them it. He gave them. He gave me on his answer already. He didn't. Yeah, he did. He didn't say which one. He didn't say which one. You're right. He he has been avoiding talking about the mochi as much as possible. But he did talk about the mochi to me on. But only that it was so good that I could bleed. Yeah. And then asked who left the prank. I thought that was the end of it, but you're right. He didn't say specifically which one. I certainly did have that homework, but I'd thrown away the rest of the mochi after I found that sewing needle. I wasn't able to answer which one Rena made. The penalty for that? Why now? <laughs> no doubt my question was written all over my face. Their answer to my question was that dry laughter. No longer make heads or tails of anything. I began to think this entire day was somehow insane. Strange. Incomprehensible. Being chased by Rena. Attacked by strange men. The penalty Mion and Rena were talking about. <laughs> what were these two laughing at? It didn't take that long for me to realize I'd been dragged into an abnormal situation. Who were these two? Who were these people? Who were these doppelgangers of Rena and Mion? Rena had gotten behind me at some point. Why was she pinning my arms behind my back? What are you doing? Don't move. This is your penalty. <laughs> My body was already very sluggish, and Rena pinning my arms made it that much harder to move. I seriously tried to struggle, but she wouldn't even budge. My panic began to well up, and I realized this was well beyond the realm of jokes and pleasantries. This freakishly monstrous strength. It would have been impossible for the Rena that I knew. And these thin, frail arms grasping me firmly. Whose arms were they? Okay, Sean, no struggling. Club rules. There are no exceptions. You can't fight against the penalty. Mion, no, that thing that looked like Mion spoke to me like how Mion would speak to me, but I was certain this was not Mion. Someone who wasn't Mion. Someone who was just pretending to be her. <laughs> Need to finish this up before the manager comes. Mion fished into her pockets and pulled out something bizarre. I could tell what it was by just looking, but for such a thing to be in her pocket, my mind wouldn't accept it. What is that? It was a felt tip marker. A small syringe. It was a small, clear syringe, like what a doctor would use when you went to him when you were sick. Rena held me even tighter, and I could hear that clattering laughter that no longer sounded like laughter blaring into my ear. That eerie laughter. It wasn't something that the Rena I knew could ever produce from her own throat. This thing that was pretending to be Rena was this their real laugh. Unable to defend myself, the syringe Mion was holding drew closer. And that needle tip was waved in front of my face countless times. Don't worry, don't worry. It won't hurt. It won't hurt. <laughs> well, what are you planning on doing? What kind of sick joke is this? Is this some kind of twisted joke? <laughs> what are you saying, Kei-chan? You know exactly what's going on, don't you? About what? I don't understand any of this at all. I know you know. No use playing the fool this late in the game. Stop talking nonsense and trying to confuse me! You're going to have done to you what happened to Tomitake-san. They're gonna write on your chest telling you to get well, you- What? Same as Tomitake-san? I didn't really understand what she meant. What did that have to do with the syringe? You're playing dumb, Keiichi kun. You should have real. Oh, you're playing dumb, Keiichi kun. You should have realized it by now. Rena whispered into my ear, laughing as if to admonish me. But even the way she spoke was repulsive beyond compare. 
playing dumb? Me? About what? What do you mean the same as Domotake-san? Wait, who's talking? Everyone thought at first that it was the hit and run. Except when the officer got closer to check if he was still alive. And he soon noticed it wasn't a normal situation. His throat was scratched out. Oh, this is a flashback. Flashback, right. Like, from a knife or something? No, nails. Nails. Nails as in fingernails with those gouged through? That's right. Tomataki sounded clawed out his own throat with his own nails and died. There's no way someone could die like that. So then for that to happen... We thought drugs were to blame, but nothing of that nature was detected. That's right, the police didn't find any drugs in tomataki sans system. Please told me they didn't find any drugs in his body. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them laughed together with that sickening laughter. Of course they'd laugh. To assume that such a medicine didn't exist just because the police didn't know about it was completely foolish. I mean, the drug that caused Tomatake-san to die in such a bizarre manner did exist. If Mion injected this into me, then what would... Then that would probably be all the proof I needed. But basically, I mean, I'd end up the same as Tomatake-san. Become hysterical, scratching out my throat in my last moments, and then die. For such an outrageous drug to exist. For Mion to be holding it, and that I was about to be injected with it. At that moment, I did not feel there was any need whatsoever to question it. What kind of idiot... When he's trying to dodge a ball flying straight for his face. Has the time to think of a reason as to why it's flying at him. Just give up. All right, then. Mion's actions lacked any gravitas, and that made it even more terrifying. There was none of the ceremony like when someone is sentenced to death. There was no hesitation at all, as if she were brushing her teeth. Mion reached out with one hand and grabbed onto my chest. Yeah, because she's going to write get well soon. <laughs> It felt like electricity had run through the back of my head, and the entire world had gone dark. Did I stand up too fast, or did someone hit me really hard in the back of the head? Having lost my sense of balance, I was assaulted by a wave of dizziness. <laughs> well, that seems well, like a good place shit. to end it. Let's call it a sode right there, how yeah. about? Yeah. Keiichi. Keiichi, my dude. Dude just needs a, a big, like, a break or something. Just needs to stop having a normal one. Well, I suppose we'll see if he managed to escape his normal one next time. Yeah, we'll see you all for the more of Keiichi's ongoing normal one next time, folks. Yay! Woo! Now, before we leave, let's talk about some Umineko spoilery stuff. Okay. Uh, again, this is at the end of the episode, so if you're here, this is the Umineko spoiler corner. I'm giving you fair warning, we are going to spoil some major fucking stuff for that game right now. Uh, so this is your last chance to see yourself on out the door, alright? That game is great, and I want you to be able to discover all that stuff for yourself. So if you haven't played it, go ahead and just hit the skip to next button in the episode thing, all right? Cool. So, the use of the word exist. Yeah. That is certainly very familiar. <laughs> Especially when we think about how it's used in the context of certain characters within Umineko, right? Mm -hmm. That characters are exist. In that case, a lot of it was characters exist so far as people are willing to support that they exist, right? Mm -hmm. Like if everyone's going to go to the if everyone's going to go to the effort to make it appear as though Beatrice exists, and everyone who can everyone who had the chance to deny it says that she does, then for all intents and purposes, Beatrice exists, right? If if everything can be if actions can be attributed to this golden witch, then yeah, she exists. If we can all agree on the fact that Grandfather is up in the study, then yeah, Grandfather exists. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So when they say Oryoshiro sama surely exists, I don't take that to mean that there's, like, maybe this is 
had cheating with foreknowledge, but like I'm not <laughs> taking that to mean that he that there is definitely an Oyoshiro sama. Just that there the concept of Oyoshiro sama, right? Mm-hmm. There is a that concept exists and there is a reason for people to want it to exist. And there's a reason that they will keep making it seem as if it exists. Hmm. Now, in Umineko, for Kinzo to exist, it required a group of people to make him exist, right? Exactly. A bunch of people, there had to be a conspiracy of people that uh, had to work together in order to make Kinzo exist. In order to fake him coming out of the room for a walk, in order to, you know, go up to his room and have those conversations with him and explain why he wouldn't come down. All those things had to happen in order for Kinzo to exist. So what is that? What would that look like here? So in this case, we have a couple of different theories already from the game floated as to why. It could be a conspiracy from other people in town that Oyashiro-sama exists for some reason. That like It could be a conspiracy on the part of the, the Sonazakis. It could be a conspiracy on the part of that group of kids who need something like that to exist in order to help explain some of the things that happened to them and how they can help help them move on from it or something like that. There's any number of reasons why Oyashiro-sama might exist. I'm just not sold that that means it literally has, there has to be an Oyashiro-sama that literally exists. Now, don't get me wrong. We did finish all of Umineko, so, you know, Magic exists. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not... I'm, we're not going full Erica on this, but I, 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 I still do want to understand like what it is, this Oyashiro-sama that exists. Right. Last question, then. Revisiting something I asked earlier, but from this new perspective. So sure. We think that Oyashiro-sama exists means some group of people is making Oyashiro-san. Oyashiro-sama exist. What does that mean, then, when Mion said... I don't believe, but the rest do, Rena especially. And when Rena seems to concur, she definitely seems to believe mm-hmm. that Oyashiro-sama exists. What does, what does that mean? I don't know. The question of what it means to Rena specifically, I think, is di- different and deeper. Because with Rena specifically, it's something she invoked while she was in a hospital or while she was under investigation for something that she did at another school, right? An incident there. Um... The reasons she came to invoke it seem removed from the reasons it was invoked at the time of the damn stuff. Mm-hmm. Because the damn stuff happened before she moved back, right? Why isn't Mion invi- invoking it if she was involved in the damn protests and I don't stoked know. about all that? Why doesn't she believe? I don't know. If it's the some, if it might be the case that it's something that's within the Sonozaki family, she might have. She might be more aware of what it actually means, but is like you know we mm. can't say anything aloud about it. Okay. But, yeah, that's about as far as I'm at with that right now. I, I still feel like I need more time to kind of synthesize things. I, I want to, I'm at the point now where there's a lot of stuff happening mm-hmm. all at once, and I kind of want to see where this all ends before I start coming up with more ideas about this stuff. Because right now, I, th- I think I'm pretty set in my my rut of, like, Keiichi is unwell mm-hmm. and, his, and, like, and is drastically misunderstanding things that are going on around him. And that is leading him to either literally see things or convince himself that he's seeing things. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, Keiichi seems unwell. Um, and I, 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 I kind of just want to let that ride out until we get something new. Because, again, the last couple bits have all just been stuff happening to him. There have been hits and like hints and stuff at, at, as to how the um, people outside of him are reacting, but... Noticeably, like, Sadako and Rika have just dropped right out of the script. Yeah. Like, they've been nowhere to be seen ever since um, this started happening. Other than Rika being like, hey, you should, you should. That was a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Now. Yeah. It's been a while. Um, And it just seems like Mion and Rena, the two adults in the group, are trying to take care of their friend who is doing their best, you know, like, who, they're doing the best to take care of their friend who is not well. That, and I still think that seems like the the most reasonable explanation at this moment. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, that second question wasn't really a spoilery thing, I guess. But like, anyway, thank you for listening to the spoiler section. 